We're all used to uh, long-term weather forecasts, but we could ha soon have truly long-range predictions. The Met Office is today opening the UK's only dedicated space weather forecast centre. It will operate around the clock to provide forecasts and develop an early warning system aimed at protecting infrastructure from the impacts of space weather, uh, such as the solar flares uh, you can see in our giant screen. Uh, let's bring in the astronomer, Will Gator. Uh, joins us uh, by Skype from Taunton in Somerset, just down the road from the new centre, which is actually in Exeter. Uh, Will, welcome to you. Um, I'm reading here a, an extraordinary fact uh, that in 1859 uh, there was a powerful event involving solar flares that disturbed the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, Lloyds of London did a study on this, and so, uh, which predicted that were this to happen now, the bill, for instance, uh, for the knocking out of the US power grid would be $2.6 trillion. So this stuff matters. Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, we're, we're very lucky that we haven't had an event like that one. It was known as the Carrington Flare or the Carrington Event. And really, if, as you say, that happened today, things would be very different. We didn't have any of the electricity in those days. And although we would get some nice effects, we'd get fantastic displays of the aurora borealis, the northern lights, there would be other problems because of our electrical infrastructure and even our reliance on things like satellites for almost everything that we do. Yes, because that happened back in 1859, and of course in these days, far more technologically advanced. We all depend on technology for pretty much every element of our lives now, it seems, most of us. I mean, what would actually happen? Would this effectively shut the world down? Well, it depends how strong the flare, the event itself is, and, and what actually it produces. Uh, in order to interact with the Earth, you need several things. One of them is uh, what's known as a coronal mass ejection, which is a, a huge, essentially, eruption of plasma that comes out uh, from the sun towards the Earth. And we need that to interact with the Earth's magnetic field. And the sort of things that can happen is you can get charging of satellites. So potentially satellites could be overloaded and, and damaged. Sometimes it could knock out electricity grids. We've had minor storms in the last few decades, and they have had an effect on electricity grids. But there may be other things that we need to do, like making sure that our actual national grid is, is reinforced against the possibility of these flares and these, these objections and these interactions because space weather is going on all the time. We're, we're just lucky, really, uh, that uh, one event hasn't actually had a detrimental impact. Well, we're talking about space weather. It feels like a bit of a misnomer, really, because this is affecting the, the magnetic fields. That's right. So uh, based, what happens is uh, it all begins, really, on the sun with these enormous eruptions called solar flares. And just occasionally, but not always, they do erupt with these uh, and create these massive coronal mass ejections. And, and they will travel out over a course of uh, a few days, if they're particularly fast, and interact with the Earth's magnetic field. And they can, they can energize the magnetosphere, the Earth's magnetic field. And, and they act a little bit like a particle collider, so they can actually accelerate uh, charged particles uh, from the magnetic field down into our polar regions, and that's what causes the northern lights, an interaction between the gases in our atmosphere and these charged particles being excited uh, by the energy uh, from the sun. But as I say, they can also have other effects on our technology.